Good evening. Good evening. As Pam said, uh, my name is Reverend Yvonne Hobson. And I bring you greetings from New Bethel Baptist Church in Youngstown, Ohio, where the Reverend Kenneth L. Simon is the pastor. I uh, just want to thank God and Bill Goodrich. Where is Bill? Right in front of me. <laughs> Bill Goodrich for this opportunity to come out and speak the word of God to a group of people who have come together on one accord. It's such an honor and a privilege. I'd like to acknowledge my team. Uh, this is my son, Dwayne. Hobson, his wife Sherry Hobson, and my dear faithful friend Carol Lynn Reed. I like to preface my sermons with just a little humor, a little levity. You know, it loosens people up and it makes their minds more pliable and amenable and receptive receptive to the word of God. So, with your permission, Bill. <laughs> it was Sunday morning, and the mother got up out of her bed and she walked into her son's bedroom. She shook him, he turned over. She said to him, son, it's time for you to get up to go to church. And he said, I'm not going to church today. She said, what? He said, I am not going to church today, and I'll give you two good reasons why I'm not going. Number one, those people over there don't like me. And number two, I don't like those people over there. And she said, well, you are going to church today, and I'll give you two good reasons why. <laughs> Number one, I'm your mother, and I said you're going. And number two, you're the pastor. <laughs> one is found in Romans 8.14 and it reads for those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God for those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God and then number two also from the NIV 2 Corinthians 5.14 just the first five words of that verse. For Christ's love compels us. For Christ, that's capital C-H-R-I-S-T apostrophe S. Christ's love compels us. So then if we put the two together, we come up with, we are led by his spirit and compelled by his love. And the subject for today is why we do what we do. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Father God, <clears throat> we come to you right now with hearts of thanksgiving. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to come together in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray right now that you would just give me a special anointing for such a time as this. 
praying, dear God, that your people will be edified, that they will be encouraged, that they will be fired up and ready to go out and continue their labor of love. So Lord, I ask that you let me decrease, that you might increase and allow me to preach this word under the unction and power of the Holy Ghost. Ask you to be with us now in this hour, dear Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Why we do what we do. As children of God, as believers, we are disciples of Jesus Christ. And Jesus told his disciples, in John 20, 21, as my Father has sent me, so send I you. So Jesus sends us into various mission fields to do the work of the Lord. Every believer has an assignment, a mission, a purpose in the promotion of God's kingdom. Now, while those of us gathered here today have multifaceted lives, we all have at least one thing in common. All of us here are servants in the same mission field. Now, that does not make us superior to those who don't minister in care homes, but neither does it make us inferior to those who are called into, say, foreign ministries or foreign missions. What it means is that the Spirit of God has led us into this particular mission field. But just because we were led in this direction didn't necessarily mean that we would go. You know the expression, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. After all, the Lord told Jonah to go to Nineveh, but Jonah was on his way to Tarshish. So what, why do we do what we do in these care facilities? Why do we do what we do? Well, we do what we do because we are led by his spirit. The spirit of God is upon us, and he has anointed us to preach and teach the gospel to those in the care of us. <coughs> and he has sent us to heal the brokenhearted. My beloved, our presence in these care homes helps to heal the hearts of those that have been broken by sickness, abandonment, and loneliness. The love of God is manifested through us, and it is shared abroad through our ministry. We all know that it's a beautiful thing to witness what a little love can do. Now, I grew up in a little town called Hubbard, Ohio. It's on the borders of Youngstown. I was the youngest of six children. My father worked in a steel mill. My mother was a homemaker. As I watched my older siblings mature, I observed that as they came into their own and became earners of income, they would lavish all kinds of lovely gifts upon my mother. My oldest brother was in the Air Force in Texas, and he would send my mother the most beautiful clothes that Texas had to offer. My next to the oldest brother was at home, and he would buy my mother anything she expressed a desire for. I remember she had seen this long mahogany dining room table. 
And she said she wished she had that table so that when all her children would come home, we could eat in style. So he bought that table for her. And then one day, he overheard my mother say that she had grown weary of all the canning that she did every year. So my brother bought her a large chest freezer. I'll never forget, it was in the 50s. And they were running some kind of special on that freezer. And the freezer came stock to the top with choice cuts of meat and all kinds of frozen vegetables and fruits. Ooh, we were some happy campers. <laughs> my sister moved to New York City, and she would bring my mother to New York for various Broadway plays, Easter cantatas, and such. And my youngest brother joined the Marines. He was stationed in Guam. And he would send money to my mother every month with a note that said, Mama, buy yourself something nice. And I can recall thinking, boy, I can't wait till I get out of school so I can do some nice things for Mama like the other kids were doing. I had determined in my mind that I was going to outdo all of them put together <laughs> when I got my chance. But it didn't happen that way. My mother died suddenly without warning three months before I graduated from Hubbard High School. I was totally devastated and I felt cheated. And when I told my, other, my older siblings, about how I felt cheated, they told me that Mama was probably more proud of me than she was of any of them because I always got good grades, but mostly because I had been an obedient child. They said all of them had caused Mama some heartache at one time or another. Now the point I'm trying to make here is not that obedience is better than sacrifice, although it is according to the word of God. The point I'm trying to make is that my siblings did those kind things for my mother for the same reason that I had been an obedient child. It was all in response to the love that my mother had demonstrated towards us. And we wanted to do things that were pleasing to her. In other words, our actions had been compelled by her love. So why do we do what we do in this mission field? We do it because God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And greater love has no man than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. We do what we do because we are compelled by his love. But what's love got to do with it? <laughs> well, everything. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And then Jesus loved us so much that he took on the sins of the world. He hung, bled, and died on Calvary's cross. But he loved us too much to stay dead. So on the third day, he got up out of the grave and declared that all power in heaven and earth was in his hands. And then along came the apostle Paul and declared that nothing 
nothing, nothing, neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. So love is the key. First John 4.19 tells us we love him because he first loved us. And the love of God is so deep, so pure, and so compelling that we have a burning desire to please him. Well, after my mother died, I was bitter, angry, confused, conflicted, and mad with God. I had convinced myself that God had made a terrible mistake in taking my mother before I had a chance to enjoy her as an adult. And so, I turned my back on God. But one day, one day, as the father was sitting high and looking low, he looked down upon me with an eye of pity. And I imagine he said, this is my child. She was trained up in the way she should go. And I will not let her depart from it. I love her the way she is. But I love her too much to leave her that way. So he reached down with his hand of mercy. He picked me up and turned me around. Placed my feet on solid ground. He fixed my heart. He regulated my mind. He set me on a street called Straight. And he told me to run on in his name. And I've been running for Jesus ever since. Vê 
Virginia as a vital mission field. And then he cried out, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And you and I and God Cares Ministry responded, here am I, send me. And God chose us. He chose us. And he didn't have to choose us just because we said we would go. Because if you recall, there was a young man who wanted to follow Jesus, but he wanted to bury his father first. Jesus did not choose him, but God chose us. And this is why we do what we do. We are led by his spirit and compelled by his love. And if we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, then we will continue to do what we do. And we are to give God thanks and magnify the Lord for choosing us to serve in this vital mission field. My friends, do you realize that God has blessed and anointed us to part the waters for so many who have stood on the banks of Jordan? We have helped them to cross over to the other side, safe in the arms of Jesus. To God be the glory for the great things he has done through us, through us. So if anybody asks you why you do what you do, tell them, I was not called into this vineyard. I was chosen. I am led by the Spirit of God and compelled by 